as a patent attorney, I deal a lot with larger companies, but I see a lot of people who are weighing as they're starting their business, or maybe even thinking about starting their business, you know, is this possible? And as, as they're looking at that, that investment and whether they should make that investment, uh, part of the thing they need to think about are those fees for the patent office in addition to the, the costs of attorney time. Maybe you can defray some of the attorney costs by going through a, a nonprofit or maybe a law clinic and then the patent office is going to help you out a little bit if you're a small entity just starting out by cutting some of your fees that they're going to take. You can patent things like materials, you can patent new chemicals or biotechnology compounds, um, you can patent structures, you can patent assemblies, you can also patent processes or methods. The limits on what you can patent might be easier to think about. You can't patent an idea. So I couldn't get a patent for a car that gets 100 miles per gallon. I could get a lot of patents on the components in the car that gets 100 miles per gallon. The, uh, the, the engine, the, the different electric motors possibly, the control systems the computers that are running a car. Uh, but if someone else was able to get a 100 mile per gallon car through completely different structures, completely different setup, they could also get a patent on that. Another thing that you can't patent uh, are natural, naturally occurring things. So if I'm hiking up north and I stumble across a really neat mineral that no one has ever seen before. I can't patent that. That's naturally occurring. Maybe I'm the only one who knows where it is, but I can't patent the mineral itself. The requirements for a patent are that it's new and non-obvious. That's a technical term, but in there is the regular term of obvious. Something could be new in a truly new sense. It could be new, but it might have been obvious to try that. Um, that's a spot where I think people really need help from someone somewhere, a patent expert of some sort, because the concept of obviousness and whether your invention is non-obvious is getting, that it's getting to a level that's very difficult because it might have just enough change to be new but maybe it's still obvious in the eyes of the patent laws. I think in general, people should think of patents as an investment. So you're gonna look at the costs, which we can talk about. You're gonna decide whether these costs are justified in light of your business. And as it really is an investment, it's just, it's an investment like real estate, it's an investment like your equipment in your business, it's an investment like employees, research and development. So the best I can give for when a patent, when you want a patent, is if the patent or cover, if the patent would be covering some part of your business that really forms an, an important basis for your business. Maybe it's a product that you sell. Maybe it's the only product that you sell. You might want a patent for that. The next step would be, can someone steal my idea? Uh, if your whole business is based on selling a specific product, and it's going to be really easy for someone else to say, hey, that product is neat. This other business is selling it for five dollars, they did all the work to develop it, I can steal their idea and make it myself for two dollars and sell it for three dollars, then you might need a patent to protect that other, to protect from the other company coming in and stealing your idea to your detriment. If it's a recipe for food, um, it's probably very difficult. There's nothing that says you can't patent a food recipe. 
Uh, it would probably go towards a method side. You're going to be taking some ingredients, mixing, cooking, those different things. The problem is that most of the ingredients that you use in a recipe have been known forever. It's pretty rare that somebody comes up with a new ingredient for food. So the problem is, and this may be a good example of the difference between new and obvious, um, it could be your recipe, your cookie recipe, could be new because you put a slightly different ingredient in there than someone else. But maybe that one ingredient would have been obvious to someone to try, and so the patent office might say, you know, look, putting um, a different type of cinnamon on top of your sugar cookies was obvious to try some different types of cinnamon. Uh, so that's a spot where maybe you can prove that no one has ever used that type of cinnamon on sugar cookies before. But it's not that much of a stretch. It's not that much of a leap to try some different types of cinnamon on your sugar cookies. So you might not be able to get a patent on that. The first step in your process is going to be an investigation, analysis, or research step. So your patent attorney or agent is going to talk to you, learn about your invention. They're going to try to understand the invention. Uh, likely then we're going to go look around. Let's, just because you think it's new, somebody else may have done it already. Maybe they weren't successful at it. Uh, maybe they published a paper about it in the 50s and couldn't figure out how to get funding for their idea, so it went away. Even though you don't know about it, even though it wasn't ever commercially produced, maybe that product or process is still old and you're not going to get a patent. So after that, if it looks like, hey, you might have something here, we didn't find any uh, we didn't find any prior products, any prior patents, any prior art is the term that we use. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and begin drafting a patent application. This can be, depending on the technology and the invention, uh, a process of anywhere up to several months. That is where the attorney or agent is going to try and take all that information gathered in the first step and turn it into a patent application. Um, it's going to describe the invention. It's going to lay out usually some claims that uh, set the bounds of what you want your patent to be and what you want to exclude others from doing. It's going to have some drawings to help describe. Most of patents are going to have some drawings to help you describe the invention better. Um, that process ends with filing the patent application at the United States Patent and Trademark Office. The patent application drafting process can be anywhere from $8,000 to $15,000 for fairly normal inventions. Some things can be even more. Complex pharmaceuticals, uh, biotechnology compounds, chemicals, these things can be even more, um, at least as far as I understand. That's a little outside of my practice area. So it is expensive, and that's just the first step. That's the preparation and then the filing of the patent application. That's getting into the door at the patent office. Next, there's going to be a fairly extensive back and forth with the patent office. They're going to say, in most cases, we don't think you deserve a patent. We found reference X. Somebody filed for a patent on something that we think is exactly like this. Or there were two products that, if you combine them, would make your patent obvious. Because someone could have looked at these two products and said, hey, if I combine these, that would be great. Well. Your patent agent or your patent attorney are then going to go back and forth with the patent office several times, arguing, refining, pointing out things that we think are mistakes. They might point out tweaks we could make to our language that would allow the patent to issue. This process 
varies widely in time and in money. Um, anywhere from one to three years is normal. After that, hopefully, you've spent all this time, all this money, the examiner says, okay, these, this application, these claims, they're, go they're ready to be allowed, we're going to issue this as a patent. At which point, you get to pay some more money, more fees to the patent office to get the patent issued, and then after that, every four years, the patent office requires you to pay maintenance fees. So even after you've done all the work to prepare an application, all the work to talk the patent office into believing that you deserve a patent, you've paid the issue fees, you've got the patent in your hand, every four years, if you want to keep your patent alive, you're going to have to pay a maintenance fee. So it can be pretty expensive then, even after you've gone through the process, to keep your patent alive. Check the United States Patent and Trademark Office for their inventor resources. It's USPTO.gov. They have a special section just for inventors. A lot of resource information that you can start before you start shelling out money or even trying to find your patent attorney or patent agent get as much information as you can. If you can afford it, try to get either a patent attorney or a patent agent. Patent agents are registered before the United States Patent and Trademark Office in the same way that a patent attorney is. However, they're not attorneys. They have a technical background. They can do many of the same things that patent attorneys can as far as communicating with the patent office, but they can't do the, the legal aspects uh, where those differ from, shall we say, normal patent practice.